Food photography has exploded in popularity with the rise of smartphone photography, and the changing of seasons means that there's always something new to photograph. Switching to a more advanced camera will bring you many advantages, but if you're just getting started, what else should you think about? First, it's good to think about the kinds of photos that you want to take so that you can think about the best lens to use. The most popular lenses in food photography tend to be in the standard to medium telephoto range, from around 50mm to 105mm. Wider lenses will help you to contextualise your subjects by allowing you to include more of the surroundings, while longer lenses should help you to pick out and focus on the main element. Macro lenses are also widely used to help with close focusing, while tilt and shift lenses are also useful as you'll typically be focusing closely to the subject, where depth of field can become very shallow. This means that it can be difficult to have two subjects at different distances in focus at the same time unless you can move the plane of focus or stop down to a small enough aperture. Many food photographers prefer to use natural light for their images, perhaps with just a reflector to help fill in shadows, as this can help to retain the natural look of the food itself. Some photographers, however, prefer to work with studio lights and flash, and these can also be used successfully. Here, you'll typically want to use soft diffused light from a softbox, for example, rather than anything harsher, and avoid sources which heat up over time, such as tungsten, as these may spoil the food being photographed. Food photographers will typically work with food stylists to help set up the shots. That doesn't mean that you can't do all the work yourself, however, but it helps to consider a few things if working on your own before you release the shutter. The position from which you photograph, for example, can make a significant difference, and this should vary with what it is you're photographing. A wide shot from above is a good idea if your scene contains a visually strong surface or a number of elements that work well together, while shooting from an angle or close-up works well when you want to highlight texture or height, or when you want to have shallow depth of field and render elements of the dish or props out of focus. The props themselves are another key consideration. Photographs of food will generally contain bowls, plates and pans, serving spoons, tablecloths and other decorative features, ones which marry well with the food being photographed. This alone can elevate a standard scene to something more striking, and so it pays to think about what colours, textures and other details will work harmoniously. So, wooden surfaces or spoons with more rustic food, for example. Even just considering the background can help. Foods that are neutral in colour may make an obvious pairing with a neutral background or neutral serving dish, but doing the opposite and selecting a more vibrant background can instantly make them more eye-catching. Of course, colourful foods are also worth seeking out to make the image immediately appealing, particularly in macro shots where there may be no additional elements. Remember that you don't necessarily need to set everything up yourself, as it may be possible to shoot in a public space, such as a cafe or a restaurant, with permission. This can save you the hassle of choosing props and may give you the opportunity to take additional images of the surroundings that may reflect the food being served. Markets are also great places to get inspired and they themselves can be great locations for food photography, although again you should always ask for permission before photographing any stalls out of courtesy. For more interesting results, you can also consider photographing the food as it's been cooked or prepared if possible, rather than just photographing the finished result. This can add another dimension to your work, particularly if there's some form of action in the image, such as the pouring of a sauce or the addition of a garnish. Finally, although most food photography is in colour, don't overlook shooting in black and white, as this can be an effective way to show the texture and form of a subject, particularly of less colourful foods, or when shooting in harsh lighting. For more tips and advice, visit us on Twitter, Facebook or Google+, or check out wexphotographic.com forward slash blog.